Without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Mrs. Cheryl C. Strawn. So please listen up. We're very happy to have you tonight, ma'am. Looking so beautiful in your national colors. <laughs> Cheryl C. Strawn often says that she is twice Bahamian, once on the day she was born, and again on July 10, 1973, when the independent nation of the Bahamas came into being. Mrs. Strawn was born in Nassau, the Bahamas, and currently resides in Freeport, Grand Bahama, the Bahamas. National pride was instilled in her when, as a senior in high school, she was chosen to be a member of the high school choir that provided the music for the cultural show leading up to the first flags raising ceremony on July 9, 1973 on Clifford Park in Nassau, the Bahamas. Her interest in flags began in the early 1990s when, as an entrepreneur, she ordered Bahamas flags from abroad and could never get the, the same color twice. This was quite upsetting to her, and she vowed to do all that she could to rectify this situation. Her quest took her more deeply into the history of the national flag and official flags of the Bahamas. Since then, she has actively pursued a study of flags of all nations and kinds known as vexillology. During her research, she discovered that there was no formal document on the proper protocol for displaying the national flag and official flags of the Bahamas. This was the catalyst for this book. After many years of research and consultation with persons at the College of Arms and the Flag Institute in the United Kingdom and the high-ranking government officials in the Bahamas, Flying the Pride, a protocol for the proper display of the national flag and official flags of the Bahamas became a reality. Cheryl C. Strawn has matriculated at College of the Bahamas, now the University of the Bahamas, and Nova uh, uh, Southeastern University. She's also a member of Florida ETA Chapter and Alpha Psi National Honor Society USA for Academic Excellence and the Flag Institute, United Kingdom. Mrs. Strawn is also a former writer for the Caribbean Christian Publications, Young Adult Division Sunday School Quarterly, and a poet and playwright. She is a member of Kiwanis International. Her greatest desire is to ensure that current and future generations of Bahamians are given the knowledge to love and respect the national symbols of the Bahamas. She's been married to Mr. Othlin A. Strawn since 1986 and the couple reside in Freeport, Grand Bahama Island, in the beautiful idyllic Bahamas. Since 1988, she and her husband have operated printing, novelties, and flag businesses in the Bahamas. Cheryl holds an associate's degree in Christian leadership and organizational management, a bachelor's degree in business management, a master's degree in Christian leadership and organizational management. She is currently completing a doctorate degree in Christian leadership. All of this could not have happened without the leading and guidings of the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom she gives all honor and glory. So please let's welcome Mrs. Cheryl C. Strawn. Thank you very much, Mrs. Andrea Major. Um, it was really exciting to me to get the invitation to come because I always love sharing what I'm passionate about, and that is my national symbols and anything to do with it. A pleasant good evening to all of you who made the sacrifice to come out. We know we've had some exciting, <laughs> exciting excitement yes. <laughs> during the last two weeks. And so I, I thank you very much for making the effort to come here. I hope that you will find it informative and enlightening and well worth the time that you are giving in being here. I want to congratulate the Historical Society for keeping the flame going, for keeping um, the history going, for, for just being steady. Something has to be said for being steady. And so I thank you for being steady. The information that I will present comes mainly from two publications. 
The first is this book called Bahamian Symbols, The First Five Centuries. Some of you may have it. If you do, hold it there to your heart. I don't know if they're still printing them. It was printed by government printing uh, years, many years ago. It was a Bahamas government commission work in the pre-independence era, which was written by Whitney Smith. And the second publication that we'll, I will be using, it's called the book that uh, Mrs. Major mentioned, Flying the Pride. It's a book that I wrote myself um, after about 10 years of research, intense research. Um, it's dealing with the protocol for the proper display of the national flag and official flags of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. This book was published in 2010 um, after about 10 years of research and consultation with the creator of the Bahamas National Coat of Arms. That would be Dr. Hervis Bain, the late Dr. Hervis Bain, a coveted mentor and first nationalist who also wrote the foreword for this book, for which I am forever grateful. Credit is also given to Wikipedia online, web, online website, uh, reddit.com, britannica.com, and Louisa, L-O-E-S-E-R, dot U-S, for some of the images shown during this presentation. Now, during this presentation, I will endeavor to take you on a journey through the history of symbols of the Bahamas represented by flags all the way up to present day symbols of our nationhood. If one takes a deeper look at symbols, in particular flags, you will notice that historical periods of a nation is often defined or marked by a flag. For example, the country of Burma, which has used a different flag each time it has had a political change. It has also fluctuated between the names of Burma and Myanmar. So when it's Burma, it uses one flag. When it's Myanmar, it uses another flag. The flag of Ethiopia with the lion on it, that persons who follow the Rastafarian religion use, is the flag that was in use during the reign of Haile Selassie, emperor of Ethiopia. However, it is not the current national flag of Ethiopia, which is the same green, gold, and red, but it has a blue wheel at the center. So if you see that flag, that lion, that's no longer in use. Now the Bahamas was a former British colony, and as such, it had its symbols uh, given to it by the mother country, England, until 1973. In the book, Bahamian Symbols, the first five centuries, there is an interesting collection of pictures that represented the colony known as the Bahamas in the early years of British rule, up to pre-independence in 1971. Some of these symbols, along with others, will be shown throughout this presentation. In an excerpt from the book, Bahamian Symbols, the first five centuries, Mr. Whitney Smith says, it might seem that so young a nation would have little interest in the realm of symbolism. On the contrary, there is a long and rich record of Bahamian flags, seals, coat of arms, and other symbols worthy of being understood and appreciated. Direct quote, if one were forced to choose the two most significant dates in Bahamian history, without question the choice would fall on 12th October, 1492, and 10th July, 1973. The discovery by Christopher Columbus of the Bahamian Islands, thus opening up the New World to Europeans, signaled the dawn of the modern era of world history. The achievement of independence by the Bahamas brought to a close almost 500 years of foreign rule. These historical events, though separated by hundreds of years, both have one focal point, the raising 
of a flag. In the book, Bahamian Symbols the First Five Centuries, the Honorable A.D. Hanna, in 1971, he was the Deputy Prime Minister. And when he announced a competition to create the Bahamian national flag and other symbols, the quote is, such symbols evoke loyalty, devotion, and patriotism to the native country. Let us ask ourselves, what is a flag? Perhaps to the unwise and disinterested person, it is considered a somewhat special piece of cloth of one or more colors with or without symbols placed on it. Perhaps some would say it's just a decorative item. But a flag is more, much more than these things. The first and most important use of a flag is an emblem of national identity. Flags are used to communicate messages of ownership, used to communicate distress, victory, and mourning. An explorer claims newly discovered territory for his country by hoisting a flag. A flag upside down means distress. A flag superimposed upon another flag means victory by the former. A flag at half mast denotes death and mourning. Ships fly flags to declare their national identity. You can see from these things that flags, far from being useless trappings or colorful decorations, have a great and illustrious history. And that was what the Honorable A.D. Hanna said back in 1971. I've chosen to entitle this presentation Bahamian History, I'm sorry, Bahamian Symbols, historical a protocol. We may get to the protocol part, but this, the history is, is very, very interesting. In order to understand the symbols that were used, we need to get a fuller understanding of what was used for symbols and what those symbols meant to convey. Flags firstly began as simple pieces of cloths attached to various types of poles or instruments to carry them. They were always used as means of identification. Whether it was to identify a castle, an army, or an organization. Flags, the one widely used symbol for a nation, have evolved to include insignia, objects, multicolors, specific designs, and other aspects all of which have significance to the person, the organization, or nation which they represent. Historically, flags are symbolic of changes in the governance of a nation. They were used to establish the current government's authority over that nation. For example, the progression of the former British colony that came to be known as the United States of America this country's flag has changed almost 50 times as more states joined the Union after the War of Independence in 1776. The flag that you see today representing the United States of America was not the original flag. But today it represents the 13 original states that joined, it started the Union, and the stars represent the 50 states of all in the Union. The stars and stripes are 13, the red and white. When Christopher Columbus landed on what he calls San Salvador, the first thing he did was to plant in the ground the flag of Spain, thus claiming these islands for the kingdom of Spain. This is what that flag would have looked like. It has, on your left, the F for King Ferdinand, and it has the Y for Isabella. Back in that day, Isabella in Spain was spelled with a Y, not an I. So this would have been the flag that Christopher Columbus 
planted on the island that he landed on back in 1492 and that flag would have then been the first flag of the Bahamas. Why a flag and not some other object that he had bought or brought with him? Why? Because Columbus knew that the hoisting of the flag which carried with it the weight and support of the nation for which it stood, established that nation's sovereignty and dominion over that particular geographical area where the flag flew. Of course, it is doubtful that the Lucayans knew this. Doubt it. Because if they knew it, they may have put up a fight. Here is this man, he's come, he's landed on this island, and he's putting this flag saying, he's now ruling over me as a Lucayan. I'm sure they did not know that. Otherwise, it, it, they may have put up a fight. But be that as it may. Flags were the primary symbol used pre-1492, down through the passage of time up to today to represent ownership, sovereignty, or domination. <laughs> 